Let's do some calls of the day. I'm looking at Cleveland Cliffs today, and I'm looking at you, Jimmy. It was initiated overweight at J.P. Morgan. I'm typing it in as I ask you this question. Wasn't previously rated. The price target's 24. The 52-week high is 22, almost 23, and it's pushing 20 bucks. So this is about shareholder return. There's a lot of moving parts here, and we can talk about U.S. Steel, but let's just focus on shareholder return for a second. Estimates are that they'll have $1.2 in free cash flow this year. Their leverage ratio is below one. Their debt to EBITDA is just below one. So they're not going to be buying back more debt. There really isn't any more debt to buy back. What are they going to do with that cash? They're not buying U.S. Steel. Um, you know, maybe the Nippon Steel deal falls through, but that's we're a long way from that. So right now, what they're going to do with that free cash flow is buy back shares and in size. I mean, that free cash flow, by the way, I think that estimate is light because you've got production of autos going up, which means volumes going up. Their cost of inputs have gone down. They've got very little in CapEx. I think they're going to be buying back a ton of shares, frankly. Jason, we mentioned Palo Alto being one of these big winners. It, yeah. it is on the call list because the target was raised at Barclays to 400 bucks. Yeah. That, that's one thing we've seen consistently, whether it's Palo Alto, NVIDIA for that matter, or any of these other high flyers. The street continues to chase these things up, up and away. Again, 400, overweight, bullish earnings. You know, February 20th is when they, uh, when they do report. What are you thinking here? Yeah, no, I think billings have continued to remain strong for, for Palo Alto. The stock's already up 27% year to date. I think one of the things that, that I'm excited about and I think will be accretive to the stock, they did $650 million worth of acquisitions between Talon and, and Dig in December of last year. Um, so I just continue to, to believe that this theme is still relevant and, and they'll see some continued price appreciation. Brian, how about this call on Albemarle today? Downgraded to neutral from buy oh. over at City. Price target goes to 120 20. They had it at 175. They cut their estimates too on lower lithium prices. I think the call was really late. I mean, so, I mean, lithium has just like fallen like a stone. And so we will add to this position to, dub to, to, to double down, but not at this point. You really need to get those lithium prices to stabilize, which is going to take production cups from like the SQM and Albemarle. So this is just one of the downsides of, you know, buying public commodities is if you're on a down cycle, it can be really vicious. But I think a lot of this is already built into the price of the stocks. I think it was a late cut, but very valid. Costco reiterated a buy at Goldman Sachs. Price target gets bumped to 750 bucks, 749. You see 722 and a half here. That was at 665 before. They say they have a, quote, new strategic era ahead. You want to give me a quick on this? Kevin, I'm coming to you, too, but Jason, yeah, what do you got? Yeah, yeah. So they, they, they obviously have a new management team coming in place in, in early March. And I think what they're focusing on is digital sales. It's only 6% of revenue at this point. Um, they're a permanent compounder. I, I love them in the, re, in the retail space. But this is interesting. I'll see how this works. Kev, so you previously owned this. Now, now you have Walmart. And you say you need to own one of these two consumer stocks. I, I'd like to answer why. And why can't you own both? But we only have a limited amount of space that we can allocate towards retail. And right now we have Walmart and Home Depot. But we love Costco. We've certainly owned it off and on over the years. The subscription model is incredibly powerful. I agree with this price uh, increase in terms of the target. Walmart's been no slouch. It's $1 away from its all-time highs. If we do go through a period where the consumer is slowing down or at least living on a budget modestly, these companies generate tons of cash. The Walmarts, the Costcos, these are incredible investments. And for us, you know, wh wh whichever one you own, you have to have exposure. For us right now, it happens to be Walmart. But uh, we love both of these names.